on his new podcast, Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon. Join Kevin for inspiring conversations with his friends and fellow celebrities who are working to make a difference in the world, like actor Mark Ruffalo. You know, I found myself moving upstate in the middle of this fracking fight, you know, and I'm trying to raise kids there. And, and you know, my, my neighbor's like willing to poison my water. Listen to Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. See that sign? Employees only. That means keep out, buddy. It's just for us buy well employees. This is where we talk freely about all the stuff happening in the world. You can keep Meghan Markle for all I care. As long as I get to take Harry to a weekend in Vegas, I'm happy. It's Employees Only, courtesy of Ron Howard, the new podcast from Imagine Audio, Pretty Fast, and iHeartMedia. Listen on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up? This is Big Loon. Check out my podcast, It's Up There. Each and every Monday, It's Up There podcast brings a conversation for supporters and business leaders of the coach. From the podcast, business, music, and entertainment deals, we have an in-depth dialogue with a level of understanding for everyone. It's Up There podcast sees through the smoke and mirrors within the industry while delivering a perspective that's one of a kind. Laugh, cry, and soak in game with every episode. Listen to It's Up There podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, welcome back to Bombing with Eric Andre, the podcast where I talk with friends, comedians, musicians, and other creative people about their worst moments on stage and getting annihilated by a live audience. This week's guest is comedian and rapper Zach Fox. He talks about his time doing stand-up in black rooms versus the whitest of white rooms. If you like this episode, subscribe to the podcast to get a new episode every week. Rate it five stars. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe to Big Money Players Diamond to get an exclusive clip from my hang with Zach Fox, plus ad-free episodes every week. Let's get into it. Bombing. Bombing with Eric Andre. Okay, we're going to talk about bombing. Let's do it. Do you have a story from your past? Like, what's the worst you've ever done on stage? Like, have you ever gotten a glass bottle thrown at you or booed off the stage or... Definitely got booed off stage. Uh, Do you do stand-up in black rooms, like Urban Night? Or do you only do like alternative rooms or mainstream rooms? I've done I've done both. Yeah. And I've had a bad time in both. Yeah. Okay. The blackest room I ever did was in Detroit. Okay. And I remember I think I whited out. <laughs> you were just like disassociating. <laughs> yeah, Academy like, like a minute in because uh, <laughs> and I can't even tell you what I was saying because I, I think I was like, Yeah, what's up? I'm, from, I'm Zach. I'm from Atlanta, and I just heard somebody in the back like oh, this nigga. <laughs> you were <laughs> already like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> you were already on the off the love list. So it just it, it already started kicking in, and like the, oh, man. the, the silence and the oh no, you know what I mean. And like even I was, your intro, just your setup got to got a, in, got yeah, a yeah. rebuttal. That's tough. And I was I was green and and yeah. like you know like. I think when I started stand up, I was definitely like, I want to be as like abrasive yeah, or edgy, edge lord, yeah, edge. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I thought that would, you know, but this is Detroit. They're like, yeah, shut up. You know, yeah. what I mean? <laughs> they're like, whatever. Yeah, and I remember I had like, uh, like my pants were uh, like slightly too short. Uh, they were like high water mm-hmm. a little bit. And somebody like called that out, and you know, black people, they don't, we don't have to like really say anything. Yeah, we could just say, "Look at his nigga pants." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it's over. And that got more laughs oh, no. oh, <laughs> than no. what I was setting up. I was in the middle of a setup or uh, something, and fuck, just look at his pants. Just look at them. Just observe uh, him. Uh, <laughs> that hurts. It hurts. It's, yeah, yeah it stings. It stings. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just walk off stage like I want a quick comedy, or were you like, uh, ah, you just wrote it? Off. I think that time and and the other worst one I had, which was in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. So you went from the blackest show to the whitest that show, absolute other <laughs> side of the spectrum, <laughs> and bombed at both, and bombed at, at the both. at the racial poles right, on right. the spectrum of right. race in America. Ex- exactly is where you had a, it's, a tough it's, time. It's not them; it's you. <laughs> is, what, <laughs> is what God was saying to me. Like it's not you. It's not them. It, you're fucking up. Uh, Wait, what happened in Salt Lake City? I was trying to tell. I think I was. I was just riffing. I was like just fucking with the crowd and I was I didn't realize how 
talking about Mormons and talking about Mormon shit in fucking Utah is like talking about Nipsey Hustle in LA. Like, right. You have to have a sensitivity. Super sensitive. Like, yeah, and yeah. I didn't realize that. And I'm just like, you know, it's my first time there and I'm talking shit. And I mean, the black room didn't boo. They were, they were still like, yeah. you know, they were still giving me a shot. They were just like, yeah. this guy looks funny and he's like right. a nerd. But right. the white room was like, boo. Oh, shit. Boo, nigger. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> Hard R. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. They started a chain. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the 40s. <laughs> Strom Thurmond was in the audience. Yeah. No, wait. They booed you off stage? No, I stayed. Oh, you stayed. They I booed stayed. and you stood, <laughs> you stood, stood your ground. I stood tall. <laughs> you know, that, that one was the worst because that one felt like, you know, in Saving Private Ryan where his ears are ringing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like in Breaking Bad when Walter White's like having a fucking cancer meltdown. <laughs> you hear a muffled yeah. just sound yeah, happening yeah, yeah. and shit. And, yeah. Uh that's funny. I think uh I think Alex Huggins was there actually. Really? I was just talking to him. So he was there, so he witnessed you. Oh yeah, he's from Salt Lake City. Exactly. I was like, why was he there? Yeah. Yeah. And he was, you know, he was having a fantastic time yeah, he because was loving it. he was like, you know. This guy standing, t- and he was like front row. Yeah, and he was just dying at Eating like the context of it. Yes, I can. That, that I was just stand and just getting hit with everything. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. still responding, but not winning in any. <laughs> <laughs> was it just the Mormon jokes that that turned them, or was the whole thing just? Uh, I think the whole, the whole thing, thing. They were yeah. just like, "Fuck you, fuck like, you. go away." <laughs> <laughs> fuck also, it you. was like. Like, I'm sure you've had this experience. Doing stand-up before someone doing music is... Oh, it's the worst. ...is ass. Like, it's the worst. Objectively. Because those people came to get in a completely different vibration. They don't, they don't mix. At all. At all. At all. Ever. No. Ever. Unless you are telling jokes over, like, a guy playing saxophone or some shit. Yeah, maybe. And who does that work? I mean... One of you has to die, though. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) According to the crowd. Yeah. No, it doesn't work. Yeah. It's two different mediums. Have you ever seen it, like, go well? Like, have you done it before? The only time, and it doesn't really count, like, I saw Chappelle at Radio City Music Hall, and he had to live quietly open up. They're so famous, and people are going specifically for them Mm -hmm. that you don't need to win over the crowd at all at that level of fame. There is like a threshold of fame where you can get away with mixing the two, but until you're at that echelon, if you're starting out at stand-up, or not even starting out, but like just like having to introduce yourself to the crowd in a way be like yes I do stand up too and I'm good at it if if you're before or after music or there's music involved and it's that kind of vibe cuz music you don't have to pay attention yeah jokes you have to pay attention yeah and music you can stand you can kind of drift in and out your attention span can drift in and out you can walk out you can walk in you can dance to it stand up you have to sit and watch you don't stand while you watch tv mm-hmm. you sit while you watch tv mm-hmm. and you pay attention while you watch tv a comedy on tv so it's the same for stand up so stand up has it, it requires something different from the audience but the audience doesn't fucking know that they don't know the nuances uh, and, and it's not their job to know it's not it's their like, job to know they don't fucking know like so a, a concert you could just at any moment start screaming yeah at the top of your lungs yeah. If you to. Yeah. yeah and when there's a part of the show where someone's like hey let me change that etiquette yeah. real quick for me, not for you, but yeah. for my stories that I want to tell you. You're like, gonna naturally be like, no, yeah, I I don't care. Cardi Playboy Cardi is about to. I don't give a fuck, right? What your dad or whoever did to you? Right, when you were right. Six, like you know, right. Bobby with Eric Andre. On his new podcast, Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon, join Kevin for inspiring conversations with celebrities who are working to make a difference in the world, like musical artist, Jewel. And what an equal opportunist misery is. It doesn't care if you're black or white or rich or poor or famous or homeless. If you were raised in misery systems, it's perpetual. Kevin is the founder of the nonprofit organization, SixDegrees.org. Now he's meeting with like-minded actors who share a passion for change, like Mark Ruffalo. 
You know, I found myself moving upstate in the middle of this fracking fight, and I'm trying to raise kids there, and my neighbor's, like, willing to poison my water. These conversations between Kevin and activist Matthew McConaughey will have you ready to lean in, learn, and inspired to act. They're all on the wrong track, help them get on the right track. If they're on the right track, let's help them double down on that and see the opportunity to stay on the right track for success in the future. Listen to Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Your career is your most valuable asset. Imagine powering it with the unvarnished advice of the most successful chief executives in the world. I'm Mike Steib, a three-time CEO, Fortune 500 board leader, and author of the top-selling career guide, The Career Manifesto. On my new show, Office Hours, I sit down with the leaders shaping our world. From unicorn founders to battle-tested executives to share the answers to the most important questions you face in your work and to help you be the CEO of your own career. No script, no spin, just straight from the gut answers to your questions from chief executives ranging from visionary founder Tommy Hilfiger to New York City's Mayor Eric Adams and our honest advice for achieving the career you've imagined. Submit your own questions by calling today at 213 213- 419-0596. Listen to Office Hours with Mike Steib on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Maya Shunker, host of A Slight Change of Plans, which Apple chose as the best show of the year. In our new season, we'll explore how the science of change can help us think differently about change in our own lives. And we'll hear stories from people like Ruby Bridges, who at age six became one of the first students to desegregate an all-white elementary school. It took her years to understand she had changed the course of civil rights in the U.S. I did not realize that my story was a part of a much bigger family, the civil rights family, the civil rights movement. And Christy Warren, a firefighter who saved others for decades until she finally sought out help for herself. And it was the first time that I realized, and it was like the greatest gift in the whole world, that I'm not alone. This is A Slight Change of Plans, a show about who we are and who we become in the face of a big change. Listen to A Slight Change of Plans on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Eric Andre. What's the worst you've ever seen somebody bomb live? And this can be like a concert or it doesn't have to be comedy. Oh man. It can just be like um, a freestyle rap battle or something where a white guy came up and said the N word and like <laughs> a bunch to the face. <laughs> I just saw that recently. That's why I saw that. You saw that but, online? Well, I saw it online. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see it. I, don't, I might have said it to you. But, <laughs> um, you know, I've seen some I've seen some some pretty bad ones. Uh I got a homie who's who's hilarious. He'll he, he's going to he's going to hate me for bringing this up. You Actually, can change this, the name to protect I'm not going to change the name. I'm not going to okay. change the name. All right. Uh, I, I respect because, it. Because because he he's 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 too dope for me to to change his name and and he would appreciate this. But he didn't really he I'll tell a great story of a man bombing. Okay. And completely taking it back. Yeah. And then winning. Okay. It was a night where it was me, uh, rest in peace, Jack Knight, Quinta Brunson, Io, uh, Jamar Neighbors, and I wanna say there was there was one more comic, but we did the belly room and uh you know, everybody oh, Clayton English was there and like everybody killed mm-hmm. and it was super dope and Thundercat was there mm-hmm. and uh room was packed, great people. Uh Mexico did my, it's my homie Mexico, Justin from Atlanta, one of the funniest people I know. But you know, he was trying to do some stand up. He was like, "Let me try it out." Is he not a stand up? And he was trying to do stand up at all. Yeah, he's, he's not, not a stand up. Okay. And he was like, "Let me try it out." Okay. And we put him on stage. We let him do five. It was like the worst. It was like he, <laughs> I think at one point he just like was quiet on stage. <laughs> like, but he told like some stories and people like were fucking with. It. They were like, "Okay, we see like some potential in this guy." We like yeah. we know he's funny and that. For your first set is right. better than most people get. Yeah, you know, people being like, "Yeah, yeah, we like you." Yeah, that's the biggest battle. Right. So people like them, and then we continue with the show. And then Steven Thundercat is like, "Yo, like, don't tell anybody, but I think Dave might show up." And I was like, "Okay." The show is ending by this point. Uh, we're all making fun of Mexico, like, ah, you know, first set, you suck, like, da da da. 
uh, Dave walks through that back door in the belly room while the room's clearing out. The lights are coming up. They're cleaning off the tables. And then people in the hallway who are leaving the comedy store. And, like, you say, and when you say Dave, you say you mean David Banner. The yeah, rapper. David Banner. <laughs> the rapper from Mississippi and activist. <laughs> walk through with the when ten, I hear Dave, I think Dave Banner. Walk through with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, is Dave Banner like super religious now or something? Uh, well, he's like super political and religious, but he acts. The he has guy like that, the Moses that, beard. The guy whose lyric is "finger fuck your pussy like you want some girl." Yeah, is very religious. Yeah, he's on was his pan African like. Was uh, it a, a, a? There's a change. There's been a change. One thousand percent. Okay. Yeah, I know, only know of the old Dave Banner. He's got like this salt and pepper. Like Fu Manchu beard. <laughs> oh wow! And I have not been keeping up with David Banner. <laughs> I yeah. thought he was just talking about vaginas. Yeah, he's consciousness, not coochie now. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay, uh, but we're talking about Dave Chappelle. Sorry yeah. to interrupt yes, your story. No. <laughs> gonna, I try to squeeze a Dave Banner reference into in every, every episode. In every, <laughs> every episode. Uh, so yeah, Chappelle walks in uh, Mexico you know has like no cooth about it like dave walks in and goes straight to the stage and he's like on stage with dave like taking a <laughs> selfie and shit like that and there's a picture actually on my wall in my office of a screenshot of his ig story with dave looking scared but uh yeah dave goes up all the people like start filing back in and everything dave this is like right before his last big special run or something like that and he 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 talked for like two hours and he was like blackout drunk already. Oh, Chappelle was. Yeah, he was like fucked oh, up. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen and him yeah, this. so he just like starts going. Yeah, and uh, it got intense for a second, uh -oh. and then Mexico's back in the crowd, and he's like, <sighs> like doing one of these. Mexico was sighing heavily at Dave Chappelle. <laughs> bold, bold, and then Chappelle heard it and he's like. I hope I'm not boring anyone. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> and everyone's like chuckling at it. And Mexico's like, nah, nigga, we just want to hear some jokes. Oh, 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 oh. And he did that like once. And Dave was like, you know, oh, you know, he gave him just like a, he threw him a little bone, like, oh, spicy, like da 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 da. And then he did it again. Like, he, he, he like heckled him again. Like, he said something during Dave. And Dave was like, Dave. I specifically remember going, I can't tell if this nigga's real or he's a figment of my imagination. It's something <laughs> I did to myself. Can y'all see him? Because why aren't y'all handling it? And everybody was just like, I don't know. Both of y'all are kind of scary. Like, yeah. this is a criminal and this is <laughs> Dave Chappelle. So we oh, all- Oh, Mexico's a little scary. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. uh, one thousand percent. He's a tough guy. He's not a tough guy. He's a sweetheart. But like, you know- but you're not going to cross He might him. poke you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, he's, okay. he's that type of dude. He's okay. just like typical Atlanta guy. Face tattoos? Really. No, just normal guy from Atlanta. <laughs> okay. <really>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it all culminates with Chappelle being like, all right, you know, he finally has to like do his come to Jesus because he's like, all right, what's up with this guy, y'all? And and Jack's like, yo, this, he did, did stand up for the first time tonight. And Dave's like, well, did he do well? And the crowd is like on Mexico side they're like yeah you did pretty fucking good Whoa, weird. Uh, and then he's like well let me tell you something you can be good at this you won't be as good as I am but you can be good at this and I can tell that you want to do this because you won't shut the fuck up and if you want to be good at this and if you really take time and like focus on the craft and you know th like the level of mastery that not just me but everybody all of your peers here are chasing is it's it's hours and i've put in more hours than all of my contemporaries and that's why i get to stand up here and walk in here and do two hours and, and do this and you can i want that for you like i will personally give you my phone number and anytime you need advice or any type of anything a word of, of solace uh, uh, whatever you're funny i will give that to you just because i can see what's in me i see that in you and you can make that decision today to take it seriously or just trifle and be the guy who was funny one time when Dave Chappelle was on stage. Wow. We can share the stage one time or this could come back around in the future and, and it could keep happening. So you have to make the decision. And uh, Mexico goes, yeah, nah, nigga, I'm gonna go uh, do cocaine in the parking lot. This is lame as fuck. And stands <laughs> up and irishes out of the room. <laughs> And I shit you not, Eric, standing O. 
He goes, yeah, nah, I'm going to do coke. Who want to come with me? Nobody left with him. <laughs> Goes out to the front of the comedy store and standing O. Oh, my God. What did Dave give up? <laughs> Dave gave up. He, he knew. <laughs> he was trying to take the higher road and be he like. He tried so hard. <laughs> be noble. Like. Polite and uplifting. It just didn't up. work. It didn't and work he just at all. Got fucking rusted. And the thing is, Mexico did bomb, right? He like bombed. Yes, right? yes. He tanked. He tanked in his set, <laughs> and he was so confident as a heckler. Yeah. And Dave was trying to. He liked this like sage. This sir, yeah, the sage <laughs> sermon on the mountain, fucking wizard. Oh my god! And then brought the house down. Brought the house down with that one. Standing O. That is fucking And then he hilarious. bombed again because he tried to come <laughs> He tried to come back and go to Dave's little after party in the back bar. Oh, my God. And, <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, poor Dave. <laughs> 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 uh, he's like bullying Dave. <laughs> literally. Literally. It was like David and Goliath. Uh, like, yeah, that's what yeah, it felt yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching, you know what I mean? Like. Also, Dave was probably like whiskey drugs, and he's like trying, he's trying new <laughs> shit. He went to the belly room so he had privacy, and he's just like working out new. And jokes. there's this demon in there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like two a.m. You're not funny. Yeah. <laughs> you suck, Dave. Oh my god. And you try to reason with this imp. Yeah, I know. He tried to reason with him. That's the saddest. <laughs> It was like he, uh, he was like Morgan Freeman in the bad high school trying to reason with the kids. <laughs> Those kids don't, they can't change. Dude. <laughs> they're bad kids. <laughs> he tried to do some Freedom Rider shit. Like, oh my god! You're not like the others. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like pull the black kid out of the class. Like, yeah. You're special. Yeah. You're like, no, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not doing coke <laughs> in the parking lot. Oh man, I wish I saw that. Man. You would have cried laughing. I wish I saw that. And I was on Molly. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so you're in the back, like, <laughs> like my oh, eyes my are like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell them Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grinding my back teeth. Oh my god! Down to a fucking... You did Molly at the fucking comedy store? One thousand percent. I don't know. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe yeah. that's a good idea. There's so many different people there, different energies. Some of like the sweetest people I, I know there, and there's some monsters there. So I don't know if Mo- maybe Molly's the way to get through the, the uh, a hang at the comedy store. It did something. <laughs> 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 Molly, Molly with Eric Andre. On his new podcast, Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon, join Kevin for inspiring conversations with celebrities who are working to make a difference in the world, like musical artist Jewel. And what an equal opportunist misery is. It doesn't care if you're black or white or rich or poor or famous or homeless. If you were raised in misery systems, it's perpetual. Kevin is the founder of the nonprofit organization SixDegrees.org. Now he's meeting with like-minded actors who share a passion for change, like Mark Ruffalo. You know, I found myself moving upstate in the middle of this fracking fight, and I'm trying to raise kids there, and my neighbor's, like, willing to poison my water. These conversations between Kevin and activist Matthew McConaughey will have you ready to lean in, learn, and inspired to act. They're all on the wrong track, help them get on the right track. If they're on the right track, let's help them double down on that and see the opportunity to stay on the right track for success in the future. Listen to Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Your career is your most valuable asset. Imagine powering it with the unvarnished advice of the most successful chief executives in the world. I'm Mike Steib, a three-time CEO, Fortune 500 board leader, and author of the top-selling career guide, The Career Manifesto. On my new show, Office Hours, I sit down with the leaders shaping our world. From unicorn founders to battle-tested executives to share the answers to the most important questions you face in your work and to help you be the CEO of your own career. No script, no spin, just straight from the gut answers to your questions from chief executives ranging from visionary founder Tommy Hilfiger to New York City's Mayor Eric Adams and our honest advice for achieving the career you've imagined. Submit your own questions by calling today at 213 419-0596. Listen to Office Hours with Mike Stein on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, 
or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, y'all, it's Jane Marie back with a new season of The Dream. And it's exactly that for you, a dream. For me, it was kind of a nightmare. See, I don't know if you noticed, but things have not been awesome for the past couple of years. I've personally been depressed and binging fast food and just sitting down a lot or laying down. And it seems like suddenly everyone is an expert on how to fix that. Half of all podcasts could be called, do what I say and your life will be better. So this season, we're going to try that by talking to the experts, those gurus, those guides. Yes, I'm talking about life coaches. And I'm talking to one about my messed up life. Come see what all the hype is about and if it's worth it. Listen to The Dream on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your stories. Have you ever been high on stage, like on 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 like Molly or ketamine or anything on stage? No, no. So stone sober on stage every time. Yeah, well, even when to, you rap. Yeah, yeah. Stone sober. Yeah, d- not a drink, not a beer. I used to uh, think I needed to be drunk to do stand up, and then I got out of that pretty quick because it just started like I was like, oh no, this is just gonna stack up in a weird. In a weird way, because right. I'm gonna have to drink before, then I'm gonna have to drink after. Yeah, it becomes a crutch. It, yeah, it was. It, it was like yeah. a little bit of a crutch. Well, and that's I smart. Just like, got rid of it. Yeah, you know. I used to think that way, and then um, I stopped giving a shit. And if I'm like, did you like drinking. get fucked up before? I've gotten fucked. up. I mean, I've been doing stand up for 20 years. I'm like, I've definitely been. I've done. One of each drug. I've done coke and done stand- and I've done coke only like five times in my life. Been on stage on coke, been on stage on mushrooms, been on stage on MDMA, been on stage very drunk. Um, I think that's it. Ketamine I've only done a few times. In my life, I want to so take know. like a rhino pill and go on stage. What's that? Like ecstasy? The, the gas station uh, dick pill. <laughs> <laughs> Orny goat weed? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to like be damn near busted. <laughs> Like I want to hear like a good. I want to get a good laugh and like pre a little bit. <laughs> edge. You want a fucking edge on stage? I took Viagra on Howard Stern, but it didn't. Viagra, you still have to be like seduced to 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 get. It's not like you pop it and you're hor- and you you have a boner. Mm. Like you have, you still have to be be aroused. By Someone's got to get you there. Someone, yeah, someone still has to get you there. It's like you, but you maintain an erection for a long time or something. But it just gave me a headache. It was fucking. It was horrible because you just weren't hard. I wasn't hard. My heart felt weird. My, like my blood felt weird. <laughs> That's the only way to it's it. just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't. It didn't. I had a pounding headache, and I had to fly to Toronto later and do a table read. I was a fucking mess. <laughs> It's a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> on Viagra, not hard. On Viagra, soft as a fucking gummy worm. <laughs> <laughs> fucking horrible. <laughs> then I thought I was kind of getting, then I went to the Newark airport to fly out of there, and I thought I started getting a boner, and I called Howard Stern back, and I was like, I, th- I think it's working now, like late, like uh, an hour after I left your show, and then it just went away. And I was like, Wait, you called Howard to, to I called to in the on the show, because the show was still on the air. <laughs> And I was like at the new where I was like I think I'm getting an erection now and then like started, wanted them to know so I wanted bad. them to know and it said it went away it was a fucking yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 I didn't know that about Viagra that yeah the activation I mean some people would swear by it but it, it, I did it once and it didn't work are you into like uh, aphrodisiac type shit for for sex do you I'm pretty easily hornied yeah like. Yeah. I'm not like I gotta eat green M and M's and oysters. <laughs> like oh, 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 now, shake your tits. Oh, finally, thank God I had all these green M and M's. Like, like you might uh, not like bitches if, you, <laughs> if it takes that. Yeah, much. that's insane. I don't believe in Aphrodite. Maybe there, maybe there is something to it, but really, you might hate the person. You see yeah, if, if it takes like if it takes weird eighty foods. jumping jacks. Yeah, I gotta eat a raw steak. Yeah. <laughs> Like I don't know. I don't buy. I mean, yeah. As long as a gal is cute and you're <laughs> drinking a little bit of fucking Pinot Grigio or whatever, mm. it's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. I've been too wasted and wasn't able to get get yeah. it up. Yeah, like whiskey dick. Yeah, uh, just fucking hammered and then you know. Yeah, just gone to the ground. I'm Have sorry. you ever just like roll with a gummy worm? The, the, the gummy. 
Uh, I've tried. I've yeah. tried and uh, kind of half succeeded, half failed. Yeah. And uh, kind of just ball it up and. Oh, yeah. You kind of have to fold, um, it, fold it and put it in <laughs> yeah, you sideways. Squish it in there. <laughs> like a fold it and put it in like a ballot. <laughs> In the middle, like, like, like mail, like, like a garden hose, yeah. <laughs> cram it in there. <laughs> then turn know. the water. On. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. There, there's been all different versions of failure in that department, <laughs> like total failure, where I'm just like, I, it's not happening. Mm. To like, where I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of doing it, or or they're trying some weird, fucking <laughs> jagged move, and you're like, you're like, ah, I know that feels good for you, but. <laughs> It's fucking me up. I'm soft. You folded it. <laughs> you folded it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm. Not Nothing specific stands out, but I've definitely had some, uh, plenty of failed attempts. Yeah. Plenty of failed attempts. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. 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 Do you, have you bombed like uh, more in like on stage settings or like which, which type of bombing sticks with you longer? Like social stuff that's really like not consequential at all or like stage shit I kind of all of the above but like stand up I mean a, st- a really bad bomb stand up wise really really is traumatic <laughs> I feel like I bomb every day something is like just a humanity is a fucking one embarrassment after the next for sure yeah 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 those hurt just humiliating like final text humiliation <laughs> I'm just like, why did I send that? Why is there a permanent record of that? And then Apple is fronting like, oh, you can delete text now. It's like, all no, right, I'm yeah, going to undo right, no. some of this humiliation. Nah, it says like, edited to, blah, 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 right. blah. It makes it worse there's a, somehow. There's endless files of the most embarrassing shit you've ever sent, for sure. Every, every, everywhere. Every, everywhere. If you think about it, every email you've ever sent. Yeah. Is just permanently in cyberspace. When did you? When did you just officially stop? Did you ever have a moment of being like, "Let me watch what I like search on the internet"? Search no, because search you can you can empty like, your cache. I feel like everything I type on that shit is going directly to like some lady named Sheila. Oh yeah, I mean probably. Like I think about. I think about the camera on your phone is could like be hacked at any time. You know, you want to know what the the most embarrassing thing someone can look at is when when you have the YouTube app, yeah, on your TV, yeah, and someone's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna search for this for this video." Yeah, my the the cortisol in my body because you think other shit you previously searched for is gonna pop yes. up. <laughs> yes, and it is. It's 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 always there, and I'm always like, are they gonna look to the left and see that I search like my name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you just meant your like porn interests. Yeah, because you, <laughs> like, YouTube YouTube is where your embarrassing shit lives. Because yeah. everybody's porn is like embarrassing, well, right? You know what I mean? Right. But like, no one could really. Porn is a shared embarrassment. It's shared. We all have to give into our reptile brain. But when and you just search like get the poison ingrown out. hair removal, <laughs> that's your embarrassment. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pimple Popper or whatever those yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah, just anything like that. It's like, ah, oh, this nigga got an ingrown hair <laughs> on his butt. Yeah. <laughs> you can't clear the clear the search. You can, but I mean, YouTube is really where I search like the most embarrassing. Yeah, because you're looking for tutorials on things that you don't already know how to do, which as a man can be very vulnerable. That's true. That's true. Like it's I don't know ego. how to make things. You're vulnerable in that thing. Yeah. 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 I my my fear is that I'm gonna be on Pornhub J and O, and then like some Russian spy is gonna like get, like zap into my camera and see me farting and jerking off and eating peanut M and M's in bed like uh, like the lot of pizza my, like a badge <laughs> pizza on my shoulder. <laughs> 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 J- j- jizzing in like a fucking free Comedy Central merch shirt that I got at a fucking after party for some rap show. Farting <laughs> <laughs> pizza right here. Pizza like a parrot on the shoulder. Just the lowest version of a man. Spit strings. <laughs> Spit strings, yeah. Nah. 
<laughs> I farted while jacking off the other day, and I was like, I am a fucking pig. <laughs> I don't belong in a, in this house. I don't belong in any in a, I believe in a bo- I belong in a fucking in a barn. I don't belong in a neighborhood. <laughs> I don't belong in an indoor structure. Take me off road and shoot me. Take me like I should live out in a barn with like donkeys and fucking Shetland ponies and sheep. Uh, and just sleep in hay because it was, it was just so. Dis- like I'm like I'm a fucking scum. Like, I'm a scum. Like you nutted and then farted. it all came out. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh it stunk. <laughs> Peanut M and M fell in my belly button. The, oh, nut, mm, the, nut, mm, the mm, nut glues mm. the the M M&M and into the. Belly. You can't get it out. <laughs> Blow the nut off. <laughs> like I'm a fucking. Horrendous. Wee wee. Ooh la la. Oh, it was a. Fu- it was humiliating. That's fucked. Yeah, I was like, I belong. I should live outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm subhuman. <laughs> so fucking low. So low. I'm wow. forty. I'm forty years old, and wow. I did that. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Martin yeah, it's and pretty rough. at the same it's time. It's fucking rough. But it had, but it, you know what? In the moment it felt great. It wasn't until like it wasn't until like your post nut brain wears off that you're like, I'm you a come, fucking you fart, loser. And it feels so good that you come again. You're stuck in a loop. This <laughs> Eric Andre's come fart paradox. <laughs> just, it's just a con- it's like a an infinity symbol of Coming, coming and farting. farting. <laughs> Snake eating its tail and jizzing in its mouth <laughs> and farting. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, uh, in the moment, you feel great. Yeah. And as soon as all those fucking <laughs> chemicals wear off, you're like, you look at yourself, you're like, I'm a fucking disgusting yeah. piece of shit. Yeah. I'm a fucking piece of shit. Dude, can you imagine coming and farting and you got a, you're getting a foot massage? Oh, if I and, did it with and, anyone in, in view, and, I would kill and, myself. And, and two people are twisting Q-tips in both your ears. That'd be amazing. Oh, my God. That'd be amazing. You might just shit. Yeah, maybe you're on you're on one of those Japanese toilets that cleans your asshole. Oh, my God. You get a foot massage. You're coming. You're farting. Oh. You're shitting. Oh. Q-tipping the perfect part of your eardrum. Oh. <laughs> you're getting a COVID test, too. <laughs> oh, it's hitting a G-spot you didn't know about. Oh! <laughs> Somebody's just braiding your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like better than ayahuasca or something. Right. Probably transcending. On that. We might need to put that together. Yeah, maybe <laughs> organize that. That's a spa I want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually feel good. Over where I live, there's a there's a barber shop and a and a Thai massage place like uh, like catty corner to each other. Uh-huh. I'm like, why don't you just knock that fucking wall down? Yeah, here? combo. Come on, man. Pizza Hut Taco Bell combo <laughs> right there. <laughs> barber shop Thai massage. Fuck like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a one-stop shop. Yeah. That's my <laughs> walk on your back while you get in a lineup. Yeah. <laughs> while you getting taped up. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> the line's all fucking jagged. Oh! Bleeding out of your temple. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck. Well, I think that's it, right? Anything yeah. else? I mean, I peed on myself one time. Not on stage, but... Did you pee on yourself? Yeah, I peed on myself one As an time. adult? Yeah. What do you mean? I was trying to catch the train in Atlanta. And you know the train in the Atlanta. Mar- the Marta? The Marta. I like Marta. Yeah. I don't that- think I've rode... Maybe, maybe I've rode... Have I rode Marta? Back there? I gotta get on there. I never ride that shit. I wanna get on that shit. That shit... Uh, goes in two directions. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You've seen, like, the map. It's, like, just the cardinal direction. Yeah. And uh, I was leaving from like Midtown Atlanta and I was in the station. I I had to pee so bad. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't find anywhere to go. I tried to go to like the back where like all the engineer shit is. Yeah. Just rats like running just past my feet. And I I go into this elevator and it's on the second floor. And I start pulling my shit out to pee in the corner of the elevator because that's all I could find. Uh. And as soon as I pull it out, it starts descending. And I look out of the glass because it's a glass elevator. Are you, are you, are you peeing at this point? No, I'm not. No, okay. But I'm looking down and through the corner of the glass of the floor as it's descending, there's just a massive 
family, like, like oh, I'd say no. about seven deep. Oh, and no. there's little white girls. Oh no. <laughs> and, and white boys in this family. And I'm like, black and my, out. My, <laughs> my worst nightmare is like is catching a, a sex offender <laughs> charge with my black dick out. <laughs> oh, Marta. And I start to, you know, I start putting it back in to zip it up, but you know, once you like hit the P button, your body's oh, like, yeah. we're peeing. That's oh, it. Fuck. Yeah. So I'm standing, and as the door opens to this white family in Atlanta who are just coming from like a baseball game or something, they just see me standing there with a P spot <laughs> descending down both sides of my legs. And, uh, <laughs> I think I started crying a little bit, like, because that had never happened to me before. And I just, I like got, I had to get on the train and like ride it for like an hour back to. <laughs> you just drenched. Just for an drenched. Hour? Smelled. Oh. Like pee pee smell. Oh, that's rough. Damn. All right. Damn. So that, we did it all. We did it. Thanks, buddy. This was fun. Appreciate it. Hell yeah. Cool. <laughs> With Eric Andre. Bombing with Eric Andre is brought to you by Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network and iHeart Podcast. Executive produced by Hans Sani and Olivia Aguilar. Edited and sound designed by Andy Harris. Our art is by Dylan Vanderberg. And if you want to confess to your own bombing moments or give us a shout out, go rate us five stars and drop a review on your podcast app of choice. Write about your own stories of bombing at life. If you're on Apple Podcasts, you can also subscribe to Big Money Players Diamond to get exclusive bonus content with every episode. And listen to all my episodes ad-free. The guests on Bombing with Eric Andre were recorded before the SAG after strike, so leave me alone, internet. Bye! On his new podcast, Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon, join Kevin for inspiring conversations with his friends and fellow celebrities who are working to make a difference in the world, like actor Mark Ruffalo. You know, I found myself moving upstate in the middle of this fracking fight, you know, and I'm trying to raise kids there. And, and you know, my my neighbors like willing to poison my water. Listen to Six Degrees with Kevin Bacon on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up? This is Big Loon. Check out my podcast. It's up there. Each and every Monday, It's Up There podcast brings a conversation for supporters and business leaders of the coach. From the podcast, business, music, and entertainment deals, we have an in-depth dialogue with a level of understanding for everyone. It's Up There podcast sees through the smoke and mirrors within the industry while delivering a perspective that's one of a kind. Laugh, cry, and soak in game with every episode. Listen to It's Up There podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. I Heart Ready app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. See that sign? Employees only. That means keep out, buddy. It's just for us buy well employees. This is where we talk freely about all the stuff happening in the world. You can keep Meghan Markle for all I care. As long as I get to take Harry to a weekend in Vegas, I'm happy. It's employees only, courtesy of Ron Howard, the new podcast from Imagine Audio, Pretty Fast, and iHeartMedia. Listen on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.